Mm-hmm. 
which best that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inshallah uh, present some other wisdom inshallah for all you see here. He was the teacher 
of Sheikh Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi, the man who conquered Bayt al Maqdis, do you know the scholars mention uh, that there are some things which Sheikh, which Sheikh Nur al Din Zangi had, and because of that, you know the famous story when, when two Jews they entered into the city of the Prophet وسلم, and when these Jews they entered into the city of the Prophet وسلم, they had beards, they were wearing jukwe, they were wearing kuppe, they were wearing amama, they were dressed. But what, but what was their intention? They went there <laughs> to cause destruction to the grave of the Prophet to the bazaar of the Prophet You know the Prophet chose Sultan Nuruddin Zangi. The scholars say at that time there was many, many conquerors. There was many fatihs. You know, if you read regarding the Ottoman Empire, there, was, there were conquerors as well. But why was Nuruddin Zangi chosen? Why was he chosen and not the rest? What made him different? He was in Egypt. The man was born in Damascus, at that time he was in Egypt. Why was he chosen from Egypt out of all the people of, in the world? Why did Allah and his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam choose Nur al-Din Zangi? The scholars say because Nur al-Din Zangi, look at these and you know, make an intention that when you will go home, you will act upon these, you will implement these. The scholars, the scholars say the first reason was because he was a student of knowledge. Because he was a talib ilm because he would spend his time learning regarding the deen. That was the first reason. The second reason, the scholars say, because he had love for ulama. He had love for people of knowledge. That's why Rasulullah chose him out of all of the conquerors. Rasulullah chose him. Why? Because he had love for ulama. He had love for the people who served the deen of the Prophet. And the third reason, the scholars say, because he was just. Because he was, you know, he had adul. Because he was someone who used to make the decision with fairness and with justice. So because of these attributes of his, Allah Jalla Ba'ala and his beloved, they chose him. And you know what he did? You know what this man did? This man, you know what? At that time when then when them Jews entered into the, they built a house within the within Medina to Munawwara in the city of the Prophet وسلم, They built a house there, and these two men, they were slowly taking a hold. This hole, where was this hole going to go to? The scholars say that this hole was going to go to the to the bazaar of the Prophet وسلم, and their intention was that when this hole, when we will go under this hole, it was like a tunnel. When we will go there, what will we do? We will destroy the grave of the Prophet وسلم. This was their intention. But Allah Jalla Ba'ala sent Nur al-Din Zangi and then when Nur al-Din Zangi reached Madinah to Munawwara, what happened at that time? The scholars say that when he reached Madinah to Munawwara, he carried all of the people of Madinah. All of the people of the city of the Prophet He said that is everyone here? Is every single person here? They said that every single person is here. But there are two people. They are very, very pious people of Allah. They are parsa, naik. Meaning they are pious men, the men of Allah. The Sultan Guru Din he said that gather them as well. So you know when he gathered them, they had big beards. They were wearing jubbe. They were wearing the amama. It looked like these people, they were very pious people. What did Sultan Nuruddin Zangi do? He chopped their necks off. And he became one of the greatest conquerors. And you know, he is the man who gave to us Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi. Do you know who Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi is? Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi is that man. The scholars say that he was chosen by Rasulullah himself. By the Prophet Sallallahu himself. The Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi. And what did he do? What did he do? What, did, what, what made him Numaya? Huh? What made him different from all of the other people? It was that he conquered Al Quds al Sharif. Al Palestine. You know, you know there are, we recently are reading many things about Palestine. Remember, having looked for Palestine, this is a part of your Iman. This is a part of your belief. The scholars say that, you know, like how you have, how you have knowledge of everything else. Like you have knowledge regarding your salah, you have knowledge regarding zakat. You have knowledge regarding some and all of these other things. The scholars say that it's necessary upon you to also have knowledge regarding Palestine. You know, Palestine is that land. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this land is the cream of the earth. This hadith is in the shawbal of Imam. Imam Behaqi mentioned this in shawbal Iman. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Palestine is the cream of the earth. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there will be people who will live here. And those people who will live in this land, what, who will these people be? These people, Allah Jalla Ba'ala will grant them the reward of martyrs until the day of judgment. Oh. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the one who lives in Palestine, and he moves out of Palestine, the 
The prophet says that he has committed a sin. And then look at his Rasulullah talks about him as well. The prophet says that there will be some people in the very same hadith. Rasulullah says that there will be some people. They will not reside in Palestine. They will not live in Palestine. They will live out of Palestine. But in their hearts, they will have the love of Palestine. Rasulullah is talking about him. So that's why, you know, it's important for us to have knowledge. For us to have ilm. And to surround ourselves with the people of ilm. And remember... Remember this is very important. Palestine, you should continue to speak regarding about Palestine and you should learn the ahadith, the narrations of the Prophet which he has mentioned regarding Palestine. I will share a few narrations regarding Palestine. The Prophet said that the, the people who live in Palestine, the Prophet said regarding them people that on the day of judgment, Allah will forgive for their sake. Because of them, Allah will forgive people. And in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will say, Brother, I live in the UK. What can I do for Palestine? Then listen to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet said that the one who gives one dirham, one dirham in sadaqah to Baytul Maqdis, Allah will enter him into Jannah. <coughs> this is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So this is something which we should strive, that we should give our sadaqah, our charity to Palestine. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, regarding Masjid al-Aqsa, remember, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had so much love for this place, that the scholars say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this hadith is in Jami al tirmidhi in the chapter of Namaz, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that visit three masjids, visit the Masjid of Ibrahim, meaning the Masjid of the Kaaba. The second masjid, Masjid al nabi The third masjid, Masjid al-Aqsa. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you know when Sayyidina Sulaiman al Islam was making Masjid al-Aqsa, when he was, you know, when he was constructing it, what happened? At that time, he raised his hand and he made three du'as. What were these du'as? I mentioned in the hadith of the... And look at this. Huh? Allah has chosen us to sit here tonight and listen to these hadiths. Then he made three du'as. His first du'a was that, Oh Allah, give me a kingdom. His second du'a was, Oh Allah, give me such a kingdom which no one else has ever had. And that's why you know the hadith in Bukhari, where the Prophet ﷺ, he tied it when he was reading namaz. And during his namaz, a jinn came in front of him. A jinn came in front of the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet was about to grab the jinn. He was about to grab the jinn, but he left it. You know what he said? He said to the Sahaba, Oh Sahaba, I was going to grab the jinn. I was going to take him. But you know why? I left him because I remember the du'a of my beloved Sulaiman, of my brother Sulaiman. And what was that du'a? That, oh Allah, oh Allah, give me something which you haven't given to others. Give me such a kingdom which you haven't given to others. And the third du'a he made, this is for us. He said, oh Allah, them people who come to Palestine and they are seeking for Tawbah, then oh Allah, forgive them people. So you know, we should make an intention of visiting Palestine. We should make this sincere intention. Because Rasulullah said that the one who visits Al-Quds al-Sharif, Allah will free his body from the fire of hell. This hadith, Imam al-Bihaqi mentioned this. Imam al-Nabi mentioned this. And you know the Anbiya al-Kiram, the prophets of Allah, they will do ziyarat of Masjid al-Aqsa, of this beautiful land. You know, Sayyidina Sulaiman al-Islam, he, he did ziyarat of this. Sayyidina Isa al-Islam, Sayyidina Musa al-Islam. Sayyidina Musa al-Islam, not only did he do ziyarat, not only did he visit Masjid al-Aqsa, the scholars say he also made dua that, Oh Allah, give me death. Where? In Masjid al-Aqsa. High in Palestine. And who else visited? Sayyida, Sayyida Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. She only did not visit there. The scholars say that, you know, in the Quran, when Allah says she migrated, she was residing in an east place. In the tafsir of this, the scholars mentioned this is referring to Palestine. I know what happened. The scholars say that she had her own room. Where? In Masjid al-Aqsa. In Masjid al-Aqsa. And who else? Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. Not only did Nuh alayhi salam visit Masjid al-Aqsa, ask me how did he visit it? Huh? How did he visit it? The scholars of, uh, of Tariq, they mention that you know when Sayyidina Nuh al Islam, when the flood came in the time of Sayyidina Nuh al Islam, at that time, because Masjid al Aqsa, it was kind of, you can say it was you know, not the same as it was before, so he did ziyara. He visited. What did he visit? Masjid al Aqsa. Where did he visit it? On his ark. Huh? The scholars say that he was sat on his ark and he was doing the didar of Masjid al Aqsa. He was looking at Masjid al-Aqsa, Sayyidina Ibrahim. The scholars say that Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, he is that prophet of Allah, that Allah, Allah has granted him respect by every single person. The Christians, the Jews, the Muslims, they all respect Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And they say that he was our prophet. He was our Nabi. He was our Rasul. We believe in Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sayyidina Ibrahim 
as well, he's also buried in Masjid al-Aqsa, in that, you know, in that area. And then who else? Who else, who else is buried there? There are so many prophets of Allah. And then our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa then Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa Remember, Rasulullah, he saw Masjid al-Aqsa in his dreams. Rasulullah saw Sayyidina Isa al-Islam in his dreams. And then Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa said that the one who reads namaz, in Masjid al in Masjid al the one who reads Namaz on his own, then Allah grants him the reward of one salah. The one who reads with Jamaat, the scholar said that, the Prophet said that Allah grants him 25 rewards. And in another hadith in Jami al Tirmazi, the Prophet said that Allah gives him 27 rewards for reading Namaz with Jamaat. And the one who reads Namaz in Masjid al Aqsa, how much reward does he get? He gets 50,000 Namazes reward. And the one who reads namaz in Masjid al Nabwi, Allah grants him the reward of 50,000 namazes. And the one who reads namaz in Masjid al Haram, Allah grants him the reward of 100,000 namazes. So that's why the message is that we should, we should seek and we should strive for seeking knowledge. For ill, remember, shaitan will attack you. Shaitan will say to you that if you're a busy person, you can't give time, you can't commit to this. Remember our un my honorable teacher, Hazrat Alama Sheikh Saqib Shami, you know he told us 18 points why shaitan attacks you. First, you know, when you want to seek knowledge, he attacks you in 18 different ways. And one of them, you know, some of them are, for example, he will say that you're too old now. Some of them that you're too, you're not clever enough. Another one is that your while you're going and sitting in front of him, he's louder than you, you're higher than him. Another one is that he, you, you, you will say to you that you can't learn knowledge right now because you have to do this, this, this. So these are the ways Shaitan will attack you. But we need to strive in seeking knowledge. This Buddha I was speaking to before, he's a child. And he said to me that he's learning Baharat. <laughs> he's learning his Fars Ulum. So we should make this intention that at least we will learn our Fars Ulum, what we need to know. And second, that we will help and we will know regarding Masjid al-Aqsa and its importance and we will understand that this is a part of our Iman. Like how Namaz is part of our Iman, like how we need to have knowledge regarding Salah when we read Salah. In the same way, it's important for us as Muslims to have knowledge regarding Masjid al-Aqsa. And the last thing, that we will give Sadaqah. You will give charity and you remember the hadith of the Prophet What is the hadith? That the Prophet said that the one who gives one dirham to Masjid al-Aqsa, Allah will free his body from the fire of hell. We will remember this hadith and the last thing that we will, that we will seek and we will preserve the meaning, the uh, preservation and we make this intention of doing the ziyarah of Masjid al-Aqsa. Inshallah ta'ala, we make this dua that Allah ta'ala keeps us bukht, paband, karband, Meaning, it gives us istikama on these intentions we have made. Mana ke se zameen ko gulzar na kar sake hum kuj har kam karte to ke jahan se guzre hum and anything good which has come has come from Allah Jalla wa Ala, His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and my honourable teacher Hazrat Yadama Sheikh Sakib Hafizahullah Taala and anything bad in this has come from myself. Wama alayna in the balagul mushi.
लिया इसने भी मदीना देख लिया उसने भी मदीना देख लिया सरकार कभी तो मैं भी कम सरकार कभी तो मैं भी कम मैंने भी मदीना देख लिया अब तो बस Ya Rahmatul 
के छुप के पढ़ती थी अपनी बगर से बोल उमर ये तो बता क्या करती थी मेरे आने से पगले क्या छुप के छुप के पढ़ती थी पहले जब को Hello. 
everyone uh, knows this club, so again, join with me. So
ما شاء الله على كل جدا كل شيء زاد ما شاء الله إنه ريزين وايد من الناس عند ريزين ااا ندري ريزين من الناس مثل ما شاء الله أنا أختار ليش يوليس ما شاء الله لا يشحن يوم بيوم يجي ما شاء الله هذا من أي خمس ما شاء الله ما شاء الله هم ما ربي يكلم تاسك في سبيتش باي بدء بلاهم سبا who's come over from Bali and inshallah give him up to set the other and pass us on Nare Tarbir Nare Risal Nare Hayri Ulamai Nisunah Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-musaleen Jaddi al-Hassan wa al-Husayn Imam al-Qiblatay Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad Qadr صاحب التاج والمعراج وعالم المبارك وسلم صلى الله عليه قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد عود بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ورفعنا لك ذكرك آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم ما يسبك البرزة والأندس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته अब एल्डर्स जो टीचर्स के जो काम करना है अभी करो अभी बुरी जवानी है अच्छा राइट नाउ यू आर इन बुरी जवानी सो आई एम गिविंग यू सलाम एंड आई सी ऑल यंगस्टर्स साइड हियर यू नो इफ समबडी केम हियर विद अ नाइफ और समथिंग आई एम शॉर वी ट्रंप हिम बट इफ द सलाम इज वीक देन यू नो देन देयर नो पॉइंट ऑफ ऑल अजोर द जॉर्ज द जोर सो अस्सलाम वालेकुम वरहमतुल्लाहि व बरकातहू السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. ما شاء الله. You guys are young lads. You know your the future army. You know we. You know back in the day we used to play Call of Duty and Black Ops and whatever it is. But now with the same Ummah and the same generation that should make that intention that we're going to liberate Masjid Al Aqsa in Shah Alam. So you need you need to have that zok and shock inside you in Shah Alam. And First and foremost, I present Mubarak Baat to my brother Jamal and each and every single one of you who have had this organization, the Young Khadims for a year. And I love that name, the Young Khadims. What does Khadim mean? And Ulama Asa, he is going to make sure my staff is on point. Is this Mulfail? I've got past now. And it comes to the word Khidmah. That you're doing Khidmah. You're all the person who's doing Khidmah. Khidmah of what? Khidmah of the Deen. You're doing work for Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ah, you don't age as well. And think about it, today is a Friday night. You guys are 17, 18, 19, so you know the mashallah. There's lads, your lads age who now they're doing, you know, bihaya come and bisharam come, so they're doing, they burn themselves in so much wrong. But you're sat here praising Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at the end of the day, it's like our elders say, I'm going to try not to do too much shari today. But it's like our elders said, and it's the truth. کہ محبوب کی محفل کو محبوب سجاتے ہیں آتے ہیں وہی جن کو سرکار بناتے ہیں We are so here because Allah and His Rasul صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم allowed us to sit here But I prepared a topic for today and the topic I want to speak about is role models Why? Because we're in the month of Sidra Abu Bakr al-Siddiq wal-Atiq رضی اللہ تعالیٰ And if you want to look for a role model there's no better person to look at Sidra Abu Bakr al-Siddiq the greatest of humans after the Prophet that the love he had for his Rasul it was impeccable, it was unmatched. Look at our role models today. We know Ronaldo, we know Messi. And we'll have the debate on who's better, who's the GOAT, Ronaldo or Messi. And we can have the debate for time. Obviously, if you say Messi is better than Ronaldo, then you know you need to watch for one more. But the reality is, is that you know we'll carry on, we'll have these debates all day. We can have the debate. Boys, who's bad? Prime Mike Tyson, Prime Ali. Even though, let's be real, most of us didn't even watch Muhammad Ali fight. But we still have the debate. You know, he knocked this guy out, he knocked that. No, Kasme Kuzan, he knocked this guy out. We'll have these debates. And we'll do all this, we'll do all that because we know these people. We idolize these people. We look at these people. Why don't we look at the Sahaba Ikram and Muhammad Ali Ta'ala in mind? Look at Sayyidina Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. If you want to see someone loving the Rasul sallallahu properly, you look at Sinab Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. There's a reason he was given that title as Siddiq wal Atiq. As an example, for example, me and Talha, alhamdulillah, we have that cross connection. He is one of my brothers, alhamdulillah. But 
If I said to tell her, you know what? You know, last night, I went to Paris. I went to Paris and uh, there was Mbappe there. I mean, we had Dua Salaam, we had Chapani, everything. He gave me Dua Salaam. You know, he wanted my autograph. I don't want his autograph. And then from there, I went to, where's Messi? Miami. I went to Miami. And then I met Messi as well. From there, I went to Saudi Arabia. I didn't go for Murab. I went to go meet Ronaldo. And me and him were chilling with each other as well. And I came back all in one night. So, Lord, would you believe me? Would any of you believe me? Yeah, come on, see. But you still wouldn't believe me, would you? And now imagine the Prophet ﷺ is coming. And the Ufar, they come to Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq and they say, You know what your Nabi is saying? Subhanallah, Asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram in al masjid al aqsa al ladhi barakna hawla wa minu yahu. Your Nabi is saying that he went from the Haramain Sharifain to Masjid al Aqsa. On the way, he met many prophets. There as well. That your Nabi is saying that there in Masjid Aqsa, he led 124,000 prophets in Salah. Then not only did he do that, he went to permit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even at what point Jibra'il, Jibra'il who, who is the archangel, who was the angel who would visit all the prophets, even he stopped. And your Nabi went higher. And your Nabi was the only one who could go to that point, Basidatul Muntaha, and speak to Allah Rabbul Alam. And then your Nabi came back in one night. And he traveled in a Burak. Bakr Siddiq said, Did my Nabi say this? He says, Your Nabi said this. Now Bakr Siddiq says, Wallahi, my Nabi is telling the truth. Because he's my Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is when you have that look for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And a beautiful narration that, you know, the son of Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, he calls the book of Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq and he says, Oh, Buji, you know the Battle of Badr? You know, it's like we have those competitions, like, you know, me and my dad, you know, often, like, I try to grapple him. But for the boys even met my dad, they know, you know, it ends in a straight knockout punch. But, you know, say, the father say, the son says, Oh, Buji, you know the Battle of Badr? Three times you came under my sword. Three times. But out of other ballet, you go. Because you're my Abu. Nasir Abu Bakr Siddiq says, Nasir Abu Bakr Siddiq says, Oh Putin, if you came under my sword, once I would have chopped your head off. Because that's my ish for the Prophet <laughs> One Sahabi is walking around the bazaar with a head in his hand. He's walking around the marketplace with a what? A head. With what? With what? With what? A head. A head. Earthworld stands. He's walking around with a head in his hand. And Sahaba say, Oh, you know what you doing? You got a head in your hand. You know what he says? He says, it's the head of my father. He says, I cut my dad's head off. Because my father did the idea of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I cut his head off. That was their look for the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our look doesn't match anything like that. And we're talking about the great As-Siddiq al-Atiq radiallahu ta'ala. Look what he did for Islam. You know, me and you today, Muttallah's ready, and before Tala came, and know the young black is actually beautiful as well, mashallah. That we say, Na dolat de, na shohret de, Mujhe bas ye saadat de, Tere khatmo me mar jao, Me ro ro kar madine me. Who bought the Asian land for Madina Shim? Anybody you know? Anyone? This is not an incredible question. So you guys are shy, so I'm allowed. But Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq wa Atiq radiallahu ta'ala. He was the one for that, for the angel land, for the sake of the happiness of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did so much for Islam. Then he says, Ya Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa I have three requests. Ya Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have three requests. My Nabi says, oh Siddiq, you ask your three requests. Siddiq says, Ya Rasul my first request. Then let the eyes be mine, let the face be yours, let me carry on gazing at your blessed face, Ya Rasulullah. That was the first request. Second request, Ya Rasulullah, the money should be mine. You should be the one to spend it, Ya Rasulullah. And the third request, he says, Ya Rasulullah, I've got nothing to give you. I've got nothing else to give you physically. But Ya Rasulullah, let the door to be mine, she should be in your nikah, Ya Rasulullah. These were the requests of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq wa Atiq ta'ala. These are the great men of Allah Ta'ala. But today, me and you, where do we look for role models? And I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the general. Like, I come from Burnley, I work with lads in Burnley, I work with lads in Arkansas, where I do Muhammad. I cannot talk about these people. 
They look for lads that they look for TikTok movies. You know, when did we become a zamana to look for TikTok movies? A guy comes on TikTok and he says, yeah, cousin, I got stopped here, I got stopped there, I got stopped here, and I got stopped there. The Mary Molly bani gya. Now, what kind of ulama do we have these days? Now, we look for people who, you know, because this is at a bad past. Oh, you know, he's a sick Molly. No, man. This is what we look at. We look at these people, these deviant people who say, and Ali Ayadu bin Lana, all he's saying is for education purposes. Although I already want to say this again. One of the guys, he says, it is better for you to al-ayadu billah ma'adullah, astaghfirullah, to impregnate your mother than to say, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, is this the people that we're looking at? Is this the people that we should be listening to? Then you get all the guys that say, it's better for you to ma'adullah, think of a donkey than to think of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is this the people that we want to look at? And then let's ask me that, oh, you know, who should we listen to? Bro, who should we listen to? Nowadays, TikTok's filled with these guys. Who should we listen to? You know, you think about it. Logically, think about yourself. One geezer saying, it's better for you to think of a donkey than to think of the Rasul sallallahu billah. And these are the same people who say, oh, you know these Barelvis, they're too hardcore, man. They're too, oh, these are bida, bida, bida. And you think about it. One guy saying all this wrong stuff. And then you got the last Sayyidi Allah Hazrat who says, Sartaab wa qadam hai tani sultan a zaman pool. Love a pool, a dahan pool, a zakan pool, a badan pool. That Ya Rasulullah, from head to toe, you're a rose. That when I look at you, you know, like for example, Mona Saki Misai here. He's an Ali Medin, mashallah. He's in his fifth year, sixth year, mashallah, sixth year. And I pray Allah Ta'ala makes him a means of forgiveness for each and every single one of his objectives. For him, he's beautiful to me. Why? Because he's an Ali Medin, he possesses the If I look at him, I still see his ears, I still see his nose, I still see his eyes. Allah Azza says, Ya Rasul, look at you, Sardaba, Qadam, Haitan, Sultan, Zaman, Pool, Laba, Pool, Adan, Pool, Zakan, Pool, Badan, Pool. Ya Rasul, when I look at you, everything is a flower amongst the flower amongst the flower. Brother Hassan read before, he read the Kalama saying, Merli Shasab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. Saying, Merli Shasab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is a great Imam. You know, me and you, you know what we do, and I, 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 you know, I'm bleeding in front of you. We need to stop doing this. We hear these Babes names here and we say, oh, you know, he's one of those ones. He's going to read, he's going to read that guy's mouth. Oh, you know, like, for example, when I was a kid, you know, one thing that I get that. And I regret it full heartedly. When we were kids, what can we do? Whenever somebody would say, Mia saw the shape. I think, oh, you know, you are And I used to think, oh, you know, I But now that we've grown up, we think, Subhanallah, Look at these words of Mia Muhammad Baksha, where he says, Us din Eid Mubarak Posi, Jis din Firam Milange, that that day will be Eid for me, that day when me and you will meet again, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Look, this is, this is beautiful poetry. It's like he said, Mary Shasab, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he wasn't just a poet, he wasn't just some guy who would write some nasheeds and write some nads. He was a great Mujaddid of his time. He was a great Alim Adin as well. But then he says, Kit hai Mehre Ali, Kit hai Teri Sana. And look at the word he uses. He says, Hustaka. I can't say that word for Pir Mehli Shasab. And for the Naat Khan side in this room, and it's just something that, you know, it's, a, it's an opinionated thing. It's not like a fuck kind of thing. But Naat Khan's request that when we read these kalams, don't say the word Hustaq. Say the word Mushtaq. Because when we talk about Pir Mehli Shasab, how can we say Hustaq? We should say Mushtaq ya ki kita jariya. Because he was a great Mujaddid of his time. He was an Alim Adeem as well. But look how he talks about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This, these are people who we should be listening to and people who follow that line. For example, Mashallah Mona uh, uh, Saqib's Qibla uh, Pirsa, who are they? Pir Saqib Shami Sab Hafidhullah Ta'ala. He's a man who has turned the lives of many, turned the lives of many thousands of people, or hundreds of thousands of people. And personally, me, I cannot go to sleep without listening to a bayan of one person. And this, I know we speak English, but I promise you, if you hear one of his Punjabi bayans, you will not go to English as a great man. Because I, I speak English myself. But I'm Mazan Punjabi. I have some of you who are going to talk about it. I listen to Fanafi Khatam in Nabi, Amir Mujahidi, Alama Khadim Hussain Rizisa, Rahimullah Ta'ala Qadis in the Sibru. They were on a different level, man. When they, it's like, for example, a demon person came to him and said, Oh, you know, you know, you, Brelvis, you don't even know your Quran properly. Alama Khadim said, the next day he goes to give a bayan. And he says, Okay, come test me. Alham to one nas. And he just reads Alhamdulillah. He says Alhamd. He does a surface Sagir for, for, for the word Hamd. Then he does a surface Kabir for Hamd. He says, This is what those Brahmis we teach. This is what we do. Because this is the way forward. We can't look at these guys just because they've got a 
buck story or because he used to be a gangster back in the days. This is not an excuse for us to listen to them. These people aren't ulama. They're not people of knowledge. And for role models, if you want a role model, look at the Sahaba Ikram We can talk about so many Sahaba Ikram and what they contribute towards Islam. For example, the likes of Sayyidina Hanzala radiallahu ta'ala Allah Akbar. Sayyidina Hanzala radiallahu ta'ala, he got married. Yeah? Now you guys are young, no juan lads. You know that when that marriage day, you guys are looking forward to getting married. But Sayyidina Hanzala, he gets married. Look, let's be honest, young lads. All those looking forward to getting married. Inshallah, getting a wife. May Allah make our wives good wives for us. May Allah make our wives a means of us entering Jannah as well and truly completing half our deen. But the great Sayyidina Hanzala radiallahu ta'ala, he gets married. And that night, it's his wedding night. He's meant to be spending moments with his wife. And what happens? The call for jihad goes. The call for jihad goes. You know what Sayyidina says? Sayyidina says, oh my wife, please excuse me. My Nabi is calling me. My Nabi is calling me. Please excuse me. How many times have we heard of muppets and idiots who leave their mothers and they leave their fathers for a girl? This Sahabi, look how great he must be. Look how great his rank is. And he says, oh my wife, wait. My Nabi is calling me. And if I don't come back, Alhamdulillah. Imagine that. He's saying to his wife, I hope I don't come back. I hope I die as a martyr then. And Sayyidina Hazrat Allah Ta'ala goes, and what happens? They have the death of a martyr. And my Nabi says that I saw angels giving ghusr to Sayyidina Hanzala in golden bath clothes. This is the maqam and worth of Sayyidina Hazrat Allah Ta'ala. These were people who were ready to give their everything for the sake of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Me and you talk about Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And one thing again, what we do in our generation is, you know, Sahabis like Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala, oh, Sayyidina Umar was a man of Jalal, Sayyidina Umar was a man of power, when he would walk, Shaitan would move away, you know, he was this hench, he had these arms and he had these muscles. Yeah, forget that. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he had scars in his eyes. Guess why? Not because of body wounds. Not because of knives or because of swords or because someone punched in Amr of the Lord. No, or dare punch in Amr of the Lord. But not because of these things. So now Amr had scars on his eyes because he would cry in excessiveness due to the fear of Allah Ta'ala, due to missing his Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, look at role models like Sayyidina Bilal Habshi Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Bilal was that Sahabi that he's on his deathbed. Sayyidina Bilal Radiallahu Alaihi is on his deathbed. And his mother, sorry, his wife and his children, they're all crying around him. And he says, why are you crying for? Rambuji, you're about to leave the world, obviously, I'm going to be upset. So Bilal says, no, today the Mahboob is going to go meet his Mahboob, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today a lover is going to go meet his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Leave me, to, don't cry today, rejoice, today is a day of Eid for me. This is what Sayyidina Bilal Ali Hamshir radiallahu ta'ala says. And Sayyidina Bilal Ali Hamshir radiallahu ta'ala, subhanallah, when the Prophet says him this Zahiri Parda from this dunya, Sayyidina Bilal says, I come to the Azan. Because when Sayyidina Bilal would do the Azan, he would faint in remembrance of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then one day, the great Sayyidina Shababi Ahlul Jannah, Imam Hassan, Ali Imam Hussain, Ali Muhammad Sallallahu Salam, they go to Sayyidina Bilal and say, Oh Sayyidina Bilal, please give us a remembrance of our, of our, of our, of our Nana Jan. You know that? They were saying Punjabi was Tazi Yaad Karam. Tazi Yaad like, you know, for example, for me, my grandfather just passed away. In two days, it'll be the sixth year that uh, is my granddad's sixth year but see but you know today even today when i meet his friends when i meet his family members his relatives i get that tazi yaad of my grandfather in the same way the this these grandsons they want to go get that tazi yaad of the nana and say oh sayyidina bilal please go and read, read the azan and sayyidina bilal is ready to give the azan on the hukum of hassan and hussain and he says ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah he says ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah and he faints he falls on the floor and he starts, you know, like this is the love for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at our love for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, Christmas just went past. We know about the star of Bethlehem, the donkey. We know the wise men and the shepherds. We know these full stories. But do any of us know about the birth of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do any of us know about the reality of Sayyidina Isa Alaihi Wasallam? Who Sayyidina Isa Alaihi Wasallam actually was? Who the mother of Sayyidina Isa Alaihi was? We know about Lady Mary, we don't know about Sayyidina Maryam. We know about Jesus, but we don't know about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. And it's a sad thing, because this is where we've come to. And it's Yola's job as the young Khadims. It's Yola's job as the young Khadims. Remember, your job is, as Tala said before, 
that you're the future generation. You're the future, our buzur, whatever they have to do. Look around you, your masjids are beautiful. Alhamdulillah, I've had the opportunity to visit many of your masjids. You know, you've got Masjid Bilal, you've got um, the Hajizafur's um, mosque, the Gumbolshi mosque, all these mosques. They're beautiful, mashallah. But what's the point of having these beautiful masjids if we've only got five, six people? We say free Palestine and we want to live in Masjid Aqsa. Every single one of us will post on our statuses and you know, we'll talk about what the IDF does and we talk about how we want to deal with these people in this dunya. You know, how are we going to deal with these ones if our Jamaat we are two, three people then? How are we going to deal with these people when your ulama don't even know who you are? Your scholars don't even know who you are. And by that, I mean, you don't even spend time with your scholars. If I ask to love some here as well, they'll say to me, they'll say that none of these people, you know, they could spend time with us. Why is that? Why is that we're not spending time with our ulama? Why are we not spending time with our teachers? They're there for a reason. Our honorable Ustad in Bani, Ustad Muhammad Abdul Rahman Al Azri, Hafizullah Ta'ala, my brother Bilal is there, he'll tell you. You know, I spoke to Ustad Sab on so many occasions, and on one time I was with Ustad Sab, and if I said this in front of their face, they bought me because they don't like me doing the tari. Well, but because when I wrote to them, we can do the tari. I remember Kibla Ustad Sab, he started crying when he wanted me. So Ustad, why are you crying? Because there's so many youngsters I see coming in. Well, none of them want to actually learn, none of them we can actually do work on. And from that day on, I saw so whenever, whenever a young lad would come into the masjid, no start to do. Asalaamu Alaikum. My name is Abdul Rahman, what's your name? How can, how can I help you? How can we take the service of Deen forward? Ustad grips every no Jawan he sees and says, you know, come here, let's spend time there. And we're witnesses to that. You know, um, just recently they, I don't know what happened, but they had a youth, like kind of similar to this, but they called all the students and they gave them all burgers and all that. You know, they just want to create a muhabbat for the youth. And this is what the purpose of young khadims is. Jamal Karam ni Hamam. The purpose of young khadims is to create that ishq and that muhabbat between you and your deen. If you're, because right now you need to correct your deen. And then Allah Ta'ala is going to ask you the dear children, what did you do for the deen? And don't be shy when it comes to much of deen. Don't be shy when it comes to much of religion. Be shy in everything else. When it comes to much of religion, don't be shy. Because Alhamdulillah we're men. Allah Ta'ala has made us as men. Our voices, our voices are not ours. So I'm just going to test here that if we actually shy in the deen or if we're not shy in the deen. If we're shy in the deen, then I'm going to talk for another two hours. Do you want that? No, you don't. So now I take me. Allah If I see you quiet, I'm going to start talking in the fourth time next month. Narayat Takbir Allahu Akbar Yeah, these boys want me to go home and not be loud <laughs> Narayat Risalat Ya Rasulullah Narayat Hadri Ya Ali MashaAllah Ya Rabbi, we don't need to be shy in the matters of deen We need to be open to the Buddha Sakim said, he said that stop learning your deen How many was I attempting to learn the deen? I'm not trying to give you problems I'm trying to give you solutions And the solution is busy your scholars Busy your teachers Have good role models <coughs> Role models like Sina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq why? Because That have role models like Sayyidina Umar Farooq have role models like Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan and have role models like Imam Ali Mushkil Kusha Shere Khuda Ali and Murtada Because yes, we know Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala was that great man who lived in the, the gate of Haiba. But we should remember Sayyidina Ali as that great man who might be described as Babu al Ilm, as the door of knowledge. These these people are people who we should try being like, people who we should read about. We should all read on these people and try to become like these people. Because I promise you, you know, you can watch these podcasts and try becoming the top G. But you're not the top G until you went to Jannah. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah. Because Andrew Tate is only going to get you so far. You know, it may be you might listen to me, you might want to get into um, trading and investing or whatever that is. But it's not going to give you the Jannah. That's the reality of that. And these Akhis and Akhida and Akhidis and Akhida, these guys ain't going to get into Jannah. If you want to get into Jannah, you have to follow the Sahaba Ikram. Follow those people who follow the Sahaba Ikram. Then follow those people who follow them. And you will find these people, Alhamdulillah. But that's only if you find people who actually talk good about the Prophet No people talk bad about the Prophet You need to find people who will guide you towards Allah and His Rasul You know, if you have friends, I have friends who guide you towards Allah and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa So like when we're together, alhamdulillah, you know, for example, Allah, when I'm sitting in the car, he just starts, you know how he is, man. He just starts his knots. 
And Alhamdulillah, it's not a bad thing. You know, sometimes you go too much, but Alhamdulillah, it's a good thing. Because his reading is not, I'm remembering Allah is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's the reality. He'll be sad then, he'll be like, ah, their body rock, you know, this rock, that rock. But Alhamdulillah, it's what reminds us of Allah is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's the reality is you need to realize, you need to have friends who remind you of Allah is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because if you have friends who say, you know, Kasmi, it's Friday night, cousin. The lounge is open today. Let's go, man. There's going to be bad girls up there. Then my brother, you're going to be with that guy. And where that guy is, I'm not going to say specifically, but you tell me where that guy's going to be. And then if you have guys that say, oh, you know, you know what, Jamal's going to mehfili today, or mehfili shukrana, whatever it is, let's go down. Then you're going to be where Jamal's going to be. And I pray I see Jamal in Jannah, inshallah. And I pray I see each other one of you in Jannah. Because that's what brotherhood is. Brotherhood isn't, oh, you know, listen, kasme, bro. If you talk to that girl over there, kasme, bro, you will get it. No, man. That's not brotherhood. Brotherhood isn't teaching someone, you know, uh, I did, uh, what's it called? Uh, forex. I do forex, you know, you do it as well. That's not brotherhood. Yeah, man, you might make each other a bit of peace. But that's not brotherhood. Brotherhood is leading your brother towards Allah and his Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I, I'm sorry if I spoke for too long. And I pray Allah Rabbul Alameen grants you the tawfiq talk from what we said. First and foremost, may he grant me the tawfiq talk from what we said. Then may he grant each other one of us. If I said anything wrong, may Allah Ta'ala forgive me. Anything good I said, Allah tawfiq illa billah. And just take this message from today that have, have brothers around you that guide you towards Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And carry on contributing towards uh, this mashallah beautiful organization. And I pray, inshallah, Jamal called us every year until the day of Qiyamah for Mafra Shukrana every year, inshallah. Amin ya Rabbul Alameen. Wa ma alayna illa kalam al MashaAllah, Brother Nafiq reminded by our good brother, Mullah Mustafa, who has come from Bangi. MashaAllah, a beautiful brother of mine who have known for quite a few years. So, Alhamdulillah, he's a quick advice came in us, and Alhamdulillah, the opportunity. MashaAllah, he's spoken on a very important issue, you know, youth and modern day issues that affect those, you know, if not all of us, you need it. <coughs> such as Hazi and Baus benefit from uh, whatever he delivered. And mashallah, whilst he was uh, doing his speech, our Allah Ibrahim, Allah Ibrahim, God be self, and from Spartan, what's going to be Spartan, and the Allah Ibrahim, God be self, from Bruni, and Mr. Dota, we are Inshallah, we will now be moving on to our final guest, who is Hafsa Sam, mashallah, so it will now be the no introduction, mashallah. He's uh, attended our methods on numerous occasions. Inshallah, we'll be presenting this Hazri with a piyama, including with a duality, which is a prep uh, address. So, Nare Takbir. Nare Islam. 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 Nare Oh,
الحمد لله this hadith is going to tell you maybe you have some sort of problem in your life which by hearing this hadith and hearing about this narration of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maybe, maybe that your difficulty, that your difficulty is relieved and we have full yaqeen in this as the Ali Karim Allah wa Jawa Kareem he says that if the veil of certainty was being uncovered my levels of certainty would still be the same yani what does this mean? That if we was to see the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending right now upon this gathering, our level of yaqeen will still remain the same. Or does Hazrat Ubayy ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala he says that he comes to the message of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he heard, mashallah, one of the Satif Sahab and the Ghulam Sahab talk about the importance of knowledge in our time. As has Kuchat al Islam, Imam al Ghazali rahmahullah ta'ala says, Ain bila amalin, what is it like? It's like a donkey with. You know, books of Quran, it doesn't make sense. Yes. So you have to acquire knowledge in order to do something. If you're just going to go and do something without knowledge prior, you're going to fail straight away. If you're going to fall face flat on the floor. And Hazrat Ubayy ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala, he comes to the Mashr of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he inquires and he tells the Mashr of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I spend my time reciting dua, I make dua, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much of my dua should I spend upon remembering you and sending salutations upon you, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What does the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? So he has it away from radiallahu ta'ala an. He says, he's a quarter enough. He's a quarter of my dua upon sending salutations upon you enough. What does the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Remember, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never hurt anybody. As we hear Allah says, Kalam what he say, Be good, more the better. He comes back three quarters, 
good, more, better. Has the Bayn Mukabah bin Allah Ta'ala comes back a fourth time. He says, if I spend my whole dua upon sending salawat upon you, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu would this be enough? What does the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, Oh, has the Bayn Mukabah bin Allah Ta'ala, if you did this, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will take care of all your pains, all your sorrows will be gone. This is the maqam of sending salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make this near today. You, you have a responsibility now. Know your responsibility. You are honoring the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People look towards you. Non-Muslims look towards you. And what do they see? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What do they see? They see Islam. <coughs> People will base Islam just upon one person. If they don't know what Islam is, if they don't know who you are, they will base Islam just upon how you are. Your characteristics, the libas you are, how you are, the venom and how you speak. How do you speak to people? Do you speak to people in a rough manner? Do you speak in a badil way? Do you speak in a sahih way? A manner in which people understand? A manner in which people, they come to know who the Messenger of God Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. Alhamdulillah, I'm going to tell you my own experience. This is between us. Yes. I know one of my family members, they got married to a someone who, Alhamdulillah, is a Muslim now. At the time, at the beginning of her life, this person was a Shia Muslim. This person was a Shia Muslim. From going to a Shia Muslim, this person went into uh, disbelief. They fell into disbelief. Then they go Catholic. Look, they're going in circles. They go in circles. Why? To find this religion is difficult. The same way when you're on this religion, when you're on this path, it being a salat al mustaqim, I mean, when you're on this path, it's difficult. It's not easy. Who told you it's going to be easy? No, this is the beauty in gaining hasanat. This is the beauty in gaining the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that requires difficulty. So this person goes from Catholic, they go from different, different people. Then when they see a person of ilm, a person of, you know, who fully manifests La ilaha illallah Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in their heart, they come, alhamdulillah, now, now today there are Sunni Muslim. Alhamdulillah. You know, this is the work which we need to do. This is, you know, it requires joy, struggle, difficulty. And the beauty of you know, being in this gathering, being, you know, associates with the Mashallah of God Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our religion is about having a nisbah. In simple words, being here is about having a nisbah. A nisbah with whom? A nisbah with the one who's worthy of having a nisbah with. None other than Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah And if you want to see, you know, beauty, true beauty, and how to leave a legacy, love the Mashallah of God Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you want to be remembered, go into the grave today. What's the name of the grave? Go to this cemetery, go to the non-Muslim grave. It's flat grass. Nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows who they are. Not even their own family will know that that's, that's their relative. Yes? But look at the greatness of having a nisbah with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Let's look all the way back. Hazrat Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala as we heard. Someone who loved and honored the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa Yet today we still remember him. Sayyidina Umar, we still remember him. Why? Because he loved and honored the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Ali karram Allah wa jahul kareem. Loved and honored the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we remember him. And if you think this is all the years back, that's why we'll bring it to here. MashaAllah, let the peace. Nare in silence. Ya Rasulullah. Nana in hadri. Ulamaya ahli sunnah. And if you want to see the greatness of having a nisbah of the Mishnah of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we look at the Sahaba, yes, then we come, fur- we come further, what do we see? We see Allah Hazrat, we come further, who do we see? We see Peel uh, Sayyid Mahar al Shasab, we come further than that. Then who do we see? Peel Sayyid Nasiruddin Nasir rahimahullah ta'ala an. Do you not think he doesn't know what's the you know the greatness of having a nisbah with the Messenger of God sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Of course he knows. This was manifested throughout his life. Yet today we still remember. We say Nasir al Nasir rahimahullah ta'ala an. And what does he say? This is the greatness of having a nisbah. This is the you know the level of certainty as we mentioned before of having a nisbah with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What does he say? Tujhe ko nasir ab ya khuf do zakh. Oh, 
The finalists for the Community Voluntary Faith Sector Award are the Young Carlins. Since the Young Carlins have since 2022, it has gone from strength to strength by giving opportunities to boys who are on their journey to becoming adults. 
giving them the opportunity to serve their community as an alternative to getting involved with antisocial behaviour. This has given reassurance to families and the community that young people strive to do good and challenge stereotypes, demonstrating positive behaviours and values to impact their neighbourhoods. Some of their projects include working alongside local mosques to organise activities for young people and local communities. Events include sleepovers and my Masjid My Future Fun Day at the Gamkal Sharif Mosque. selflessly serving society so in that way that it's selfless it's not about myself it's about the person to whom I'm serving uh, and I think it's remarkable and seriously mashallah if you if you were to see the happiness that exists in my heart as I was just walking and I looked around and I thought mashallah I was wondering where all the youth were and I find you all mashallah uh, so alhamdulillah it's Allah bless you all and just to give a little context, I think, for all for you to be able to see, for it's important for the believer to see, in that, alhamdulillah, uh, it's not always the case, but sometimes it's the case that our parents are right here, so our parents are Mimani, or that they worship Allah, or our grandparents do. And sometimes through their benefit, through their blessing, we end up on that path also. It's not always the case, but one thing we can say is, and I mentioned on Jummah today as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people today say that we're living in an age of fitter. And they'd say X, Y, Z, LGBT, uh, uh, you know, social media, whatever's happening, and antidepressants are more prescribed than they ever have been before. And then I gave the cure. I said, look at this verse. Allah says, In the Ladina Qadu Rabbun Allah. Those who say our Lord is Allah. So they remain upon worship. What happens? Tatanazzalu alayhim al malaika. The angels descend upon them. They become people of mercy. They become people of, of happiness and joy. And Allah says to them by the angels, Allah ta'khafu, have no fear. Wala ta'hzanu, have no grief. Wa abshiru bil jannati lati kuntum du'adun. And Allah says to the angels, give them bushar. Give them the good news of Jannah which they have been promised. In other words, the righteous believers have been promised. And then I said, 
our elders, you know, when we're going through difficult times, and Maulana Sahib here, uh, who's far, not far away, but elder than myself and has more life experience than myself and can tell you better. And our elders, when we go to them and we, we're struggling for advice, and you know, what do our elders say? Sometimes they will just say, uh, yeah? That's all they say sometimes. Like, Don't worry, Allah better can see. Allah will make things better. Allah khair can see. And you know, Wallahi, if you were to uh, write a book, you know, this book you can now. if you were to compile a book on this, what does this mean? Allah khair can see. The reality is that you have to go into 30, 40 years of life experience. Then you come to the Nadida, which is Allah khair can see. You know why? Because when you've been through difficult times and then you turn to Allah and you say, Rabbun Allah, then the angels descend upon you. They don't just descend upon any mere mortal. They descend on those people and our parents who stand on the Musalla and our mothers who pray for us and our fathers who pray for us and the elders who built the Masajid. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are benefiting from their banquet. We're going to have langar. We're benefiting from the langar of our Muslim. We're benefiting from their langar that they spent years doing. And I am, wallahi, I'm saying that you guys are so lucky. At your age, I wasn't doing what you were doing. And uh, everyone knows individually, the elders here, who, at, at that age, what were we doing? So Alhamdulillah, we have profound happiness for you and our du'as are with you. And inshallah, <coughs> anything you need, we are there to assist you. But really, my heartfelt uh, congratulations are with Jamal. And that's what I would say that see the, the context in which you're in. You guys are third generation now. And Alhamdulillah, you guys are you guys are confident. Your response to Palestine, I was looking at that presentation, remarkable. You know, you just if you were to show that to other people, the people will be amazed. And you will hear that feedback. So Alhamdulillah, that's my genuine heartfelt. And also, uh, you know, you have Umar, yeah? This is a word in Arabic you have, language. But then you have Ruhani Umar. You have spiritual here. Yeah? And they're not always the same. So someone can be 18 years old, but have a spiritual age of 40. Someone, and, and it can be the opposite. Uh, so when we talk about maturity, when we talk about serving people, there are 40 year olds who haven't come to this Nadija of self serving society. So Alhamdulillah, may Allah protect you, may Allah grant you tawfiq to see, inshaAllah, and Allah keep us all connected under the side of Mullah Fanchish and the likes of our elders. Barakallahu feekum.
प्यारे Sake, ya Rabbil Alameen, for the sake of the Shuhada of Gaza, 
Allah, we ask you to accept our prayers and accept their shahada. Ya Allah, finally we pray for our elders, Ya Rabbil Alameen, our teachers who granted us guidance and who put us and inspired us to be on this path of the deen. Allah, all of these wonderful tanaha and the praises of Rasul, the beautiful ulama, those who have taught, studied themselves and now teaching them. Allah, all of these wonderful young people here, these blessings that you have given us, Allah, give us the tawfiq to have value for them. Give us the ability to, 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 to value them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And finally, Allah, we pray for all of those elders who are physically no longer here. Spiritually, Ya Rabbil Alameen, the arwah, our teachers, our blessed father, the Muhammad bin Ibn Zaman, rahmatullah ta'ala alayh, and all of the many ulama of this town that granted us, Allah, the tawfiq that we have today, Allah, grant them all a few places in paradise and make their graves, Allah, amongst the gardens of paradise. Finally, once again, we pray for every single person here, Ya Allah, but in particular for our dear brother Jamal and his family and his blessed friends, the companionship that he has developed over the year, Allah. Allah, make that even more strong. Allah, make that even more solid. Allah, make that even more full of sincerity in the class. The ulama that have come from the masajid, that have served and, and that have supported this initiative, Allah, we thank them also for their continual support. And Ya Allah, we ask finally once again, Allah, give us the ability to continue to be united and ultimately, Ya Allah, full of the class and mahabba for each other, for you and for your blessed Habib. عليه الصلاة والسلام وصلى الله على حبيبك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وسلم عليه برحمتك يا رحمين